All right. So kind of jumping on from the basics and more into actually styling now. Uh, I find that when I go and I style a wig, um, I, people, people have actually asked me, like, you know, I've got to do X character, where do I even start, how do I know what to do? Um, I normally look at the wig, and I'll look at the shape in the wig and see, if, does it jump off in one direction, does it look like there's a big hunk of something inside of it, you know, what's going to be the easiest way for me to achieve that style? Um, and usually the answer is either you need to use foam, um, or you need to use teasing uh, to create some kind of poofy structure inside of the wig. Um, and, you know, which one you do is not, doesn't really matter too, too much. I find that I almost, personally, this is just me though, I like to use foam for as much stuff as I can. I find it's a very fast way to add a lot of volume. Um, but if you've got a character whose hair is not super unnatural, um, like it's fluffy, like Ramona's hair is super, super fluffy, uh, Lapis's hair here is super duper fluffy. It would look a little odd to have a very rigid structure in there, or it doesn't go out super far. Um, just teasing it can oftentimes be enough. Um, the key to doing this, however, is you actually need a good quantity of hair. So you need to either start with a very thick wig, um, like uh, you know, Epic Cosplay, or even if you start with a big wig like that, you need to add hair into it. So we would use our wefting method to take those wefts, we would add them to the wig, and usually uh, the easiest way is to put the wig on top of a head. Make sure you stretch it down if you're not using a canvas form, just because that mannequin head is smaller than your head and you don't accidentally want to shrink it when you add glue into it. Um, but stretch it down, pin it down, and then take your wefts and you can either sew them in, um, kind of replicating what the wig normally is. So I sew it to the elastic, I sew it to the edge right here. Or what I like to do, because I'm a lazy person, is I take khaki glue and I glue it in. And it works super good, actually. <laughs> no reason to not do that. I, I was, like, for real, if you take khaki glue, put a little dot in and stick it to the elastic and then stick it to the side, I have never had a problem doing that. Um, and I can't answer it. <laughs> it's awesome. um, just make sure you don't slather it in because otherwise you're going to get it on your canvas head and then it's going to be stinky or you can uh, make the elastic a little less stretchy uh, than you want it to be so don't go super duper but it's awesome put it on put a pin on wait four hours and it's done um, but so the reason you need to add these fibers when you do this kind of teasing is because, like, have you ever seen, like, way back in yon day, someone would have, like, a cloud wig with, like, three pieces of hair and a spike? You'd be like, why'd that happen? <laughs> um, why that? And it's true, it's a mystery. I didn't know what I was doing 10 years ago. <laughs> no one did. No one knew what they were doing. Um, and the reason for that is that there's just simply not enough hair. Like, I, I can't get to my real hair, but if I take a hunk of my real thin, nasty hair, and I hold it like this, and I try, and I spray glue, like, you guys can all imagine what that looks like. Um, you need a large amount of fiber to create the illusion that my hair is, like, as big as my hand. Um, and the other reason for that, not only does it look really good, but it's more structurally sound. Um, I, I'm not going to go over how to tease. I hope everyone knows how to tease, uh, but if not, you can Google it. Um, when you tease, and like and that's in this bottom picture right here, you can see right under where the hair's moved up, there's this huge hunk of stuff just sticking out the back all by itself, and it's staying there. Um, and that's because when you have a huge amount of fiber and you tease it up like that, and you, and you tangle the fibers together, there's so much hair that it stays put. And actually, if you kind of um, move your hand, so if I need the hair to go like this, if I tease and then I kind of go like this, it will stay in that shape if you have enough hair and you tease enough. Um, I find that glue is great. However, if you want your shape to stay and last a long time, having a good physical shape and then the glue is just the final icing on top, that is what's going to make your wig do exactly what you want for as long as it can stay. Um, otherwise, the glue is going to fade out at some point um, and you're probably not going to be super happy. Uh, so with the teasing, I like to put got to be on, and then like tease it up a whole bunch, and then I like to put more got to be on, 
and then I like to take a hair dryer and then put it on. Um, and that pretty much makes it so that not only is there glue in there binding the fiber and bi uh, to itself, but the, the heat from the hair dryer also locks that kinked shape into place. So that stuff is not going anywhere. Um, and then after the teasing, so this is actually kind of in reverse order, uh, you then smooth the top back over it. I like to take a piece of the top hair, the top visible stuff, and get it out of the way. I don't like to tease it and then try and straighten it. Uh, I find that that doesn't work super well. You're going to end up with those kinks because you heat locked it. Um, so get whatever's going on the top out of your way. Mess with the inside. Here's what it looks like. The inside's nasty. And then hide it all with your nice, pretty fiber uh, and glue on top. That's how you're... Yeah, that's how this works. The inside of this, I, I meant to put a picture of the in progress because it is vile. <laughs> it looks like a hairball. It, yeah, it looks like it looks like a cat vomit purple hairball. <laughs> <laughs> it's wonderful. Um, because who cares what the inside looks like? It's just an outside. So as long as you have that nice, pretty fiber pinned up like here, doesn't matter. No one's ever gonna know. It's basically the wig equivalent of safety pins. Yeah. No one can die. Yeah, yeah. Um, another word about the got to be, actually, since this is a good place to do it. Um, got to be is awesome. It's got to be glued, not got to be spiked. It's the stuff in that big uh, yellow. yellow yellow, thing. It's like nine bucks at CBS. Um, got to be glued, is, got to be uh, whatever, is super interesting because I first got it and I was like, oh, everyone uses this. I'm going to use this. And I sprayed it. And I looked at it, and I was just like, this isn't working. Why does everyone love this? Am I stupid? And the answer was yes, because I wasn't <laughs> using it right. Um, got to be really works by far the best when you spray it, and then you hit it with a hairdryer immediately. Um, it's really damp. Uh, you actually don't want to super oversaturate your, your fiber. You want to try and get an even coat over everything. Um, but there's something about the heat that when there's two fibers and got to be like a little sandwich between them, it is just rock hard solid if you add heat. If you don't add heat, it just doesn't do that. Like maybe it does after two hours when it dries, but like I've never sat still for that long, so I have no idea. Um, so yeah, if you can do a layer, got to be, hair, more got to be, hair dryer, super great, super rock hard solid. Um, don't put it on the top of a, of a thing like this, though. If I had done that on top of lapis, um, you know, the top would be all rock hard, and that's not really the look that I wanted. Um, the got to be is really on the inside where the teasing is. Uh, same thing for Damic over there. Um, tease, 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 tease. Bloop, kind of went off like that, and then a good layer of, of hairspray or something on top um, just to keep it in place.